Namaste, Dhanavat Pranam. Here, reading Srimad Bhagavatam by the instruction and grace of our spiritual master, Om Vishnu Pad Paramahamsa, Sri Pad Bhakti Madhava Puri Maharaj. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Canto 3, the status quo, chapter 15, text 21. Rupini Kvananyati Charanar Vindam Vilambujena Hari Sadmani Mukta Dosa Samlakshate Svatikta Kudya Upeta Eme Samarjati Vayadanu Grahane Yayatma. The ladies in the Vaikuntha planets are so beautiful as the goddess of fortune herself. Such transcendentally beautiful ladies, their hands playing with lotuses and their legs bangles tingling, are sometimes seen sweeping the marble walls, which are bedecked at intervals with golden borders. In order to receive the grace of the Supreme Personality of God. Purple. In the Brahma Samhita, it is stated that the Supreme Lord Govinda is always served in his abode by many, many millions of goddesses of fortune. Lakshmi Sahasra Sattva Sam Brahma Seva Mana. These millions and trillions of goddesses of fortune who reside in the Vaikuntha planets are not exactly consorts of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but are the wives of the devotees of the Lord and also engage in the service of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. It is stated here, in the Vaikuntha planets, the houses are made of marble. Similarly, in the uh, Brahma Samhita, it is stated in the grand, it is stated that the ground on the Vaikuntha planets is made of touchstone. Thus, there is no need to sweep the stone in Vaikuntha, for there is hardly any dust on it. But still, in order to satisfy the Lord, the ladies there always engage in dusting the marble walls. Why? The reason is that they are eager to achieve the grace of the Lord by doing so. It is also stated here that in the Vaikuntha planets, the goddesses of fortune are faultless. Generally, the goddess of fortune does not remain steadily in one place. Her name is Chanchala, which means one who is not steady. We find, therefore, that a man who is very rich may become the poorest of the poor. Another example is Ravana. Ravana took away Lakshmi, Sitaji, to his kingdom. And instead of being happy by the grace of Lakshmi, his family and his kingdom were vanquished. Thus, Lakshmi in the house of Ravana is Chanchala, were unsteady. Men of Ravana's class want Lakshmi only, without her husband, Narayan. Therefore, they become unsteady due to Lakshmiji. Materialistic persons find fault on the part of Lakshmi, but in Vaikuntha, Lakshmiji is fixed in the service of the Lord. In spite of her being the goddess of fortune, she cannot be happy without the grace of the Lord. Even the goddess of fortune needs the Lord's grace in order to be happy. Yet in the material world, even Brahma, the highest created being, seeks the favor of Lakshmi for happiness. Text 22. Vapi shuvi druma tatas famala mitipshu. Krishyan vita nijavane tulashi birisham. Abhyar chatis fala akam unasam ikshavakram. Ucheshitam Bhagavate Tyamatanga Yachtri. The goddess of fortune worship the Lord in their own gardens by offering tosi leaves on the coral paved banks of transcendental reservoirs of water. While offering worship to the Lord, they can see on the water the reflection of their beautiful faces with raised noses, and it appears that they have become more beautiful because of the Lord's kissing their faces. Purport. Generally, when a woman is kissed by her husband, her face becomes more beautiful. In Vaikuntha also, although the goddess of fortune is naturally as beautiful as can be imagined, 
she nevertheless awaits the kissing of the Lord to make her face more beautiful. The beautiful face of the goddess of fortune appears in ponds of transcendental crystal water when she worships the Lord with tulsi leaves in her garden. Text 23. Yana Vrajantya Gabido Rachananu Vada Shrivanti Hain Yavishaya Kukata Matigni Yastu Shuta Hata Bhagar Nurbir Atasaras Kamstanchi Pantya Sarane Shuta Mahu Hanta. It is very much regrettable that unfortunate people do not discuss the description of the Vaikuntha planets, but engage in topics which are unworthy to hear and which bewilder one's intelligence. Those who give up the topics of Vaikuntha and take to talk of the material world are thrown into the darkest region of ignorance. Purport. The most unfortunate persons are the impersonalists, who cannot understand the transcendental variegatedness of the spiritual world. They are afraid to talk about the beauty of Vaikuntha planets because they think that variegatedness must be material. Such impersonalists think that the spiritual world is completely void, or in other words, that there is no variegatedness. This mentality is described here as kukata matignihi, intelligence bewildered by unworthy words. The philosophies of voidness and of impersonal situation of the spiritual world are condemned here because they bewilder one's intelligence. How can the impersonalist and the void philosopher think of this material world, which is full of variegatedness, and then say that there is no variegatedness in the spiritual world? It is said that this material world is the perverted reflection of the spiritual world. So unless there is variegatedness in the spiritual world, how can there be temporary variegatedness in the material world? That one can transcend this material world does not imply that there is no transcendental variegatedness. Here in the Bhagavatam, in this verse particularly, it is stressed that people who try to discuss and understand the real spiritual nature of the spiritual sky and the Vaikuntas are fortunate. The variegatedness of the Vaikuntha planets is described in relation to the transcendental pastimes of the Lord. But instead of trying to understand the spiritual abode and the spiritual activities of the Lord, people are more interested in politics and economic developments. They hold many conventions, meetings, and discussions to solve the problems of the worldly situation where they can remain for only a few years but they are not interested in understanding the spiritual situation of the Vaikuntha world. If they are at all fortunate, they become interested in going back home, back to Godhead. But unless they understand the spiritual world, they rot in this material darkness continuously. Text 24. Yanam chatatra vishayam sahadarmam yatra Naradhanam bhagavato vitarantyam yusha Samohita vitataya bhatamaya yete Lord Brahma said, My dear demigods, the human form of life is of such importance that we also desire to have such life. For in the human form, one can attain perfect religious truth and knowledge. If one is human, uh, if one in this human form of life does not understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead and his abode, it is to be understood that he is very much affected by the influence of external nature. Purport. Brahmaji condemns very vehemently the condition of a human being who does not take interest in the personality of Godhead and his transcendental abode by Punta. The human form of life is desired even by Brahmaji. Brahma and other demigods have much better material bodies than human beings, yet the demigods, including Brahma, nevertheless desire to attain the human form of life because it is specifically meant for, living, uh, for a living entity who can attain transcendental knowledge and religious perfection. It is not possible to go back to Godhead in one life. 
But in the human form, one should at least understand the goal of life and begin Krishna consciousness. It is said that the human form is a great boon because it is the most suitable boat for crossing over the nascent ocean. The spiritual master is considered to be the most able captain in that boat, and the information from the scriptures is the favorable wind for floating over the ocean of nations. The human being who does not take advantage of all these facilities in this life is committing suicide. Therefore, one who does not begin Krishna consciousness in the human form of life loses his life to the influence of the illusory energy. Brahma regrets the situation of such a human being. Text 25. Yachavra jantyam nimisham rishabhanu vritya dureyama hyuparinas paraniya shila vartur mitas huyashasha katanu nanuga vaikalavya vaspa kalaya pulaki kritanga persons who Persons whose bodily features change in ecstasy and who breathe heavily and perspire due to hearing the glories of the Lord are promoted to the kingdom of God, even though they do not care for the meditation and other austerities. The kingdom of God is above the material universes and it is desired by Brahma and other demigods. Purport. It is clearly stated herein that the kingdom of God is above the material universes just as there are many hundreds of thousands of higher planets above this earth. So there are many millions and billions of spiritual planets belonging to the spiritual sky. Brahmanji states herein that the spiritual kingdom is above the kingdom of the demigods. One can enter the kingdom of the Supreme Lord only when one is highly developed in desirable qualities. All good qualities develop in the person of a devotee. It is stated in Srimad Bhagavatam, 5th Canto, 18th chapter, verse 12, that anyone who is Krishna conscious is endowed with all good qualities of the demigods. In the material world, the qualities of the demigods are highly appreciated, just as even in our own experience, the qualities of a gentleman are more highly appreciated than the qualities of a man in ignorance or a lower condition of life. The qualities of the demigods and the higher planets are far superior to the qualities of the inhabitants of this earth. Brahmaji confirms herewith that not only persons who have developed the desirable qualities can enter into the kingdom of God. Brahmaji confirms herewith that only persons who have developed the desirable qualities can enter into the kingdom of God. In the Chaitanya Charitamrita, the devotees' desirable qualities are described to be 26 in number. They are stated as follows He is very kind. He does not quarrel with anyone. He accepts Krishna consciousness as the highest goal of life. He is equal to everyone. No one can find fault in his character. He is magnanimous, mild, and always clean internally and externally. He does not profess to possess anything in this material world. He is a benefactor to all living entities. He is peaceful and is a soul completely surrendered to Krishna. He has no material desire to fulfill. He is meek and humble, always steady, and has conquered the sensual activities. He does not eat more than required to maintain body and soul together. He is never mad after material identity. He is respectful to all others and does not demand respect for himself. He is very grave, very compassionate, and very friendly. He is poetic. He is expert in all activities. And he is silent in nonsense. Similarly, in Srimad Bhagavatam, third canto, 25th chapter, verse 21, the qualifications of a saintly person are mentioned. It is said here that a saintly person eligible to enter into the kingdom of God is very tolerant and very kind to all living entities. He is not partial. He is not kind both to human beings and to animals. No? He is not partial. He is kind to both human beings and to animals. He is not such a fool that he would kill a goat uh, Narayan to feed a human Narayan or Daridra Narayan. He is very kind to all living entities, therefore, he has no enemy. He is very peaceful. These are the qualities of persons who are eligible to enter into the kingdom of God. 
that such a person gradually becomes liberated and enters the kingdom of God, confirmed in Srimad Bhagavatam, fifth canto, fifth chapter, verse two. Srimad Bhagavatam, second canto, third chapter, verse 24, also states that if a person does, uh, does not cry or exhibit bodily changes after chanting the holy name of God without offense, it is to be understood that he is hard hearted and that therefore his heart does not change even after he chants the holy name of God. Hare Krishna. These bodily changes can take place due to ecstasy when we offenselessly chant the holy names of God. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama, Hare Hare. It may be noted. It may be noted that there are 10 offenses we should avoid. The first offense is to decry persons who try in their lives to broadcast the glories of the Lord. People must be educated in understanding the glories of the Supreme. Therefore, the devotees who engage in preaching the glories of the Lord are never to be decried. It is the greatest offense. Furthermore, the holy name of Vishnu is the most auspicious name. His pastimes are also non-different from the holy name of the Lord. They, there are uh, many foolish persons who say that one can chant Hare Krishna or chant the name of Kali or Durga or Shiva because they are all the same. If one thinks that the holy name of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and the names and activities of the demigods are on the same level, or if one accepts that the holy name of Vishnu to be a material sound vibration, that is also an offense. The third offense is to think of the spiritual master who spreads the glories of the Lord as an ordinary human being. The fourth offense is to consider the Vedic literatures, such as the Puranas or other transcendentally revealed scriptures, to be ordinary books, uh, ordinary books of knowledge. The fifth offense is to think that the devotees have given artificial importance to the holy name of God. The actual fact is that the Lord is non-different from his name. The highest realization of spiritual value is to chant the holy name of God as prescribed for the age. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare. The sixth offense is to give some interpretation on the holy name of God. The seventh offense is to act sinfully on the strength of chanting the holy name of God. It is understood that one can be freed from all sinful reaction simply by chanting the holy name of God, but if one thinks that he is therefore at liberty to commit all kinds of sinful acts, that is a symptom of offense. The eighth offense is to equate the chanting of Hare Krishna with spiritual activities, such as meditation, austerity, penance, or sacrifice. They cannot be equated at any level. The ninth offense is to, speci uh, is to specifically glorify the importance of the holy name before persons who have no interest. The tenth offense is to be attached to the misconception of possessing something or to accept the body as one's self with, uh, while executing the process of spiritual culti uh, cultivation. When one is free from all ten of these offenses and chanting the holy name of God, he develops the ecstatic bodily features called pulak, uh, pulaka, pulakashru. Pulakashru. Pulaka means symptoms of happiness and ashru means tears in the eyes. The symptoms of happiness and tears in the eyes must appear in a person who has chanted the holy name offenselessly. Here in this verse, it is stated that those who have actually developed the symptoms of happiness and tears in the eyes by chanting the glories of the Lord are eligible to enter the kingdom of God. In the Chaitanya Charitamrita, it is said that if one does not develop these symptoms while chanting Hare Krishna, it is to be understood that he is still offensive. Chaitanya Charitamrita suggests a nice remedy for this connection. He, uh, it is said in verse 31, chapter 8 of Adi Lila, that if anyone takes shelter of Lord Chaitanya and just chants the holy name of the Lord, Hare Krishna, he becomes freed from all offenses. And thus ends our reading for today. We will continue from text 26 on Monday. Are there any comments or questions from the assembled devotees? Oh, Prabhuji, what can you explain the Ridra Narayana? Text 25, I think.
Uh, he was making sure the Prabhupada was making the difference between, um, yes, hold on. He was making the difference between a human and a goat. He, sa he said, Daridra Narayana is a human, is the human Narayan, and uh, the goat Narayan is also there. Okay. Yeah. He said, so the, the sentence was, he is not such a fool. The, the devotee, the devotee is, is not partial. He is kind to both human beings and to animals. He is not such a fool that he will kill a goat Narayan to feed a human Narayan or Daridra Narayan. So Prabhupada called the, the human as the human form of Narayan as Daridra Narayan. What did you think, Didi? What did you think that was? <laughs> uh, that's all I didn't understand, Prabhuji. Uh, like uh, uh, Narayana, I know, like, oh, I would just come with Daritra Narayana. That's only I'm confused. <laughs> I think so it means human. Okay. Jai Om Vishnu Pad Paramahamsa Shri Pad Bhakti Madhava Poi Maharaj Ki Jai. Jai. Shri Prabhupada, Shri Guru Maharaj, Shri Guru Dev, Shri Acharya Dev, Shri Shankar Maharaj ki Jai. Jai. Shri Rupanuga Guru Varga ki Jai. Jai. Our glories to the assembled devotees, our glories to the worldwide devotees, Sama Bhakti Veda Vrinda ki Jai. 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 Jai Hey. 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 Hey.